Today, I'll be taking Minecraft to places never seen before. I added multiple other planets that replicate all of the features of Earth and combined all of that with functional trains, all of the base Minecraft create mechanics, and a storyline. This is Create Space and Trains. It's time to create the world, so starting things off we are going to have to make a new world and name it something fitting for the series. <laughs> Alright, that works. After creating the world, I got a message telling me that everything I'm doing could possibly randomly stop working one day. So while the world was loading in, I could only think that the months of preparation would end in disaster. And I spawn in snow. What the fuff? I started to gather some wood, but it seemed a little bit laggy, which to be honest wasn't much considering the message at the start. I was surprised it was even working. I then remembered I had to let the entire solar system load in, so I let the planets load in. After everything loaded in, it seemed to be working fine. So I collected some wood and made some starting tools. After that, I headed over to a nearby exposed cliff to collect some cobblestone. I left after making a boat and set off to raid a nearby arctic village. After raiding a few houses and saying hello to the townspeople, I prepared to beat up their golem. I used the iron from the golem to make a pickaxe and said farewell to the townspeople and headed off to new lands. It wasn't long before I came across an exposed abandoned mine shaft, so I decided to collect some wood before heading down to make a home for the night. I then saw some nearby sheep and went to collect them for food. After nearly getting shot by a skeleton while lighting up the new house, I went down to the mines and found some diamonds in an abandoned minecart. I finished mining and didn't have enough diamonds to make tools, so I started looking into basic create mechanism recipes and realized that there was still a lot that I needed to do. I then crafted the first andesite casing to put us in the andesite age and to use for the mechanisms later. After sleeping for the night, I headed out the next morning to find a suitable location for a temporary house. I found a cool place for a house and built a small house to set up some basic mechanics, as well as three water wheels to harvest the water current, connected with shafts and a chain drive so we can sort of bundle up the stress units. After adding cog ratios to speed up the shaft and allow the press to work faster, I pressed the first piece of copper which I then used to make fluid pipes to transfer liquids. And it was back to the mines for more ores. After pressing more copper into sheets, I crafted some fluid tanks to go with the pipes and stepped into the copper age by crafting copper casings. After collecting the copper casings, I crafted a hose pulley that we will use in just a minute. I then set out to find a nearby lava pit, and once I found one, I set up the hose pulley to collect the lava for both fuel and to make obsidian for another portal. I then attached the pulley to a large fluid tank, put a cool valve on the side of the pulley, connected the belts, and lowered the pulley to start collecting the lava. I applied the wrench to the pipes to make them transparent, and acquired the industrial spillage achievement. I was now able to dispense lava every time a bucket was placed on the depot. I then removed all of the pump equipment and headed back to the house for some valuables. After coming back, I made a 5x2 pit for creating obsidian and collected all of it, obtaining the ice bucket challenge achievement. I then went into the nether and set up what seems to be the most illegal water wheel I've ever seen. Oh. I then built a platform out over the lava which will be used for the hose pulley, installed the pipes built using sheets from earlier, added some glass on the platform, mechanical pumps along the pipes, and then I was ready to test our new method of fuel extraction. I followed the lava all the way to the tank and once it started filling we got the tapping the mantle achievement. After making the platform look better and lighting it up, I checked to see we had about 107 lava buckets in the tank so far. The next day I headed down to the mines, found some diamonds, and killed a creeper. After building the basics of a tree farm, I realized I needed some glue, which required slime balls. So I set out on a journey to find a swamp, quickly coming across a desert village with prime real estate for a shipping port later on. I then killed the nearby mobs and went to sleep. The next day, I uh, borrowed some of the village's wheat and caused some chaos in the town by trapping villagers in their house for later use. I then debated killing the golem while eating fish and decided to just move on. Now, I didn't know this before I set off on my journey 
journey for thousands of blocks, but I could have just made slime from dough with create mechanics. But here I was in a swamp, about to get rough in the mud with some slime. I killed some slimes and reconstructed a nearby ruined portal, connecting this one with the one from the one I made earlier. I then used the slime and iron to make glue, glued the tree farm mechanics together, planted the saplings, and let it run for a couple of Minecraft days since we will need a lot of wood for our next projects. In the meantime, I got a visit from this friendly fella. I then built a steam engine and realized I needed to go collect some blaze in my blaze burners in order to heat the engine. So I set off to find another fortress and gallantly fought four blazes at once. After getting the blaze burners filled up, I placed them under the engine, finally allowing it to work. I then headed over to the village once again to grab a villager, and after bringing one of them back, I built up the base of a villager breeding house. I then picked up another villager and brought him back and finished up the rest of their house. And I'm not a very good builder, but I think this turned out quite decent. I then started construction on a little underground base area that I could use for extra storage or farms. I then worked on the mechanics for an elevator that uses a mechanical piston and finished up the elevator shaft, finished the outside design and the redstone wiring, placed the lever and took the first test ride. After installing a portal and digging out a small area, I started using another mechanical piston with mechanical drills glued on with a linear chassis to mine out a large area for the base. After finishing the inside, I built another drill on a rope pulley, except this one was going straight down to create a mine shaft for an elevator that I'll make later. I then realized I needed to get brass so that I could make a remote operating system for the mine's elevator. So I headed to the nether to set up a mechanical mixer, specifically with a blaze burner under it, since you need to heat up the basin whenever you're making brass since it's a metal. And with zinc and copper thrown into the basin, we have our first pieces of brass. After applying the copper to some stripped logs to create brass casings, we confidently step into the brass age. I then instantly made some redstone links and a redstone controller. After testing the links, I was ready to install them on the elevator. So I installed them with different specified channels and it seemed to be working just fine. So after cleaning up all of the mechanical mining equipment, I built a nice matching elevator box inside the top of the shaft. After gluing everything together, it was time to see if it worked, and it does. I took a break to build this small observatory platform with very essential items for when we observe the moon in the next episode. Then I made some copper diving gear and headed to the nether to fill the copper back tank. With the back tank equipped, I was ready to get working on a new and improved tree farm. I just thought I might take the time to explain this will simply be a better, more efficient tree farm, allowing for power from an engine inside of our small base and a collection system leading into the base. After connecting the base to the tree farm with a ladder and connecting the collection system, we were collecting wood. Then I used the deployer to create a precision mechanism. These are so tedious to craft and definitely something I'm going to have to automate eventually. After that, I placed down a gantry carriage on a smallish wheat farm that I made outside of the villager house. All that was left was to connect the steam engine to the wheat farm with a speed controller, clutch, and a gear shift. I then turned the speed up and it was ready to test the machine. And it seemed to be working. So I set up the wheat collection system and headed off to collect some sheep for more villager beds. After getting two sheep into an enclosure, I set up a nice mob-proof watchtower that I could collect the wheat from. I then crafted two empty schematicas, a schematic table, and a schematic cannon. Then I headed over to a create world and built up a nice looking factory and saved it as a schematic. I loaded up the schematic in survival and realized that I needed a little bit more gunpowder. So I headed down to the mine and made sure the placement was good to go. After putting the resources in a connected chest, I started printing and print it did. For three entire Minecraft days, this cannon cranked out the factory, coming to life in the late hours of the final night. And that concludes Starting Power, the first episode of our new game shattering adventure. Yeah, that's pretty true. That's true. And yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. That's pretty true. I mean, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. That's fucking true. Um...
That's how it is, dude. 